The following is an unofficial translation by Vivian Legg and Dyson Divine of three excerpts from Billy Meyer's book Ein Quenchen, Wissen, Sinn und Weisheit a bit of knowledge, sense and wisdom. Translated August 26, 2008. Sadness. Page 5. A bit of knowledge, sense and wisdom. Sadness is a psychic emotion against which the human should become very largely immune and which he should neither love nor respect, even if the majority of humanity considers it favorably and considers it to be of primary importance in the expression of feelings. However, as a result of this, life itself as well as the human's conscience, knowledge, consciousness, virtues and love only becomes artificially embellished in order to evade the real processing of the facts and the actual moments of having to process certain occurrences and events, and to not have to confront them in appropriate contexts which acknowledge the truth. In this way the sadness degrades into wretchedness, which works against all insightfulness and therefore makes recognition and grasping of the real facts impossible. Through this emerges a state of giving up on a situation or matter and so forth which engenders suffering, which ought to be mastered and thereby also understood, but which leads, as a result of wrong ways of thinking and thereby also the wrong engendering of feelings, to a psychic debacle which ends in extensive sadness and leads to the abolition of all reason and leads to confusion. Only the human who has already overcome sadness in its basic characteristics and converts it into controllable thoughts and feelings which no longer permit any kind of degeneration, and which are adapted to the creational natural laws, is able to realize the moment of recognizing and grasping the real truth of love in all creation given things, in order in understanding the given creational natural laws and directives to recognize that afflictions indeed can occur from time to time, but that they should not extend to sadness, rather to the recognition, comprehension and understanding of things and of life, as well as to joy, because sadness actually only comes about from selfishness as well as from turning away from the joy of existence, therefore also, however, from not understanding and not wanting to understand the matters, and the laws and directives, of life. Consequently these facts only need to be grasped and made to conform with the correct norms in order to master sadness in certain moments and in order to have a positive attitude towards life, joy and love. In praise of love, truth and wisdom. Page 80. A bit of knowledge, sense and wisdom. When one finds effective, true love, truth and wisdom, then one recognizes with astonishment, that in all their essence and forms they are very simple. Nevertheless, directly because of this simplicity, the human does not want to know anything about them nor about all their meaning and value because, what is simple, so he thinks, is worth nothing is of no significance and is not precious. True love, truth and wisdom, so he believes, are only valuable when a high price must be paid in order to acquire them and when they cannot be grasped nor understood even in their fundamentals, and are complicated. And if it is brought home to him, the human, that true love, truth and wisdom, as the most precious of all goods, are free and can be obtained simply through the power of clear and reasonable thinking, then he wonders and asks, how come everything can be obtained in such a simple way, since the teaching of religions, philosophies and diverse ideologies will indeed show that everything is quite unfathomable and, in its deepest sense, inexplicable. And the human is so strongly imprisoned and deeply rooted in this erroneous delusion that he rejects the simplicity of true love, truth and wisdom from the start without conceding it even a tiny chance of the still existing possibility. And it is this delusion, which also bears the blame for the human seeking the preciousness of true love, truth and wisdom in completely abstruse, complicated and involved things which are completely foreign to the objects of the search and which lead to terror and confusion. And in this delusion he is moved in his belief and in the false love, truth and wisdom, which are conjured up for him by the false, erroneous and confused teachings. So the human loses himself in confused, worthless things, which are brought to him and are hammered in by the religions, philosophies and other ideologies and which make his head so full that he is no longer able to distinguish between reality and that which is imaginary. Nevertheless, 
However, the humans fill themselves with false joy, even when they only understand very little, or not the slightest, of the entire erroneous and confused teaching since that which is brought to them is extremely confusing, contradicts itself, is illogical and without content. But, nonetheless, the humans believe that the erroneous and confused teachings, which are made accessible to them are still, rich, profound, powerful and instructive words from which true love, truth and wisdom come forth which simply can be appropriated without having to be intensively learnt and without having to change their attitude and world of thoughts. The erroneous and confused teaching in which the human loses himself, and which he can never fathom in its real content, causes him to believe everything is simply given, sent and laid in his lap by a divinity or other higher power, Consequently that he simply needs to effortlessly accept these gifts in order to come to know real, true love, truth and wisdom. But the reality, that everything must be worked out consciously and through learning, is lost in the current of ignorance, as is also the fact that true love, truth and wisdom are easy and simple to obtain and without high material values, respectively, without money, and so forth, if they are really unconsciously sought for and the step of learning is taken. Ultimately, everything is anchored, first and foremost, in the innermost, creational being as an indestructible good, and, in this, in the deepest foundation of the consciousness, this fact is also consciously and constantly extant. Only due to the obstinacy of the human does this fact appear to be too cheap to give it heed, to accept it and to make it useful. Rather, the human tends to seek his well-being and salvation in erroneous and confused teaching of often extremely banal and ununderstandable form because he also imagines, on the other hand, to thereby know more and be more important and respectable in comparison to others. That is easier than seeking the true values and putting them into practice. But it is also easy to know something about love, truth and wisdom, Yet for uncommonly many humans it is extremely difficult to make these values a component of their personality and their lives because they turn away from this and refuse to live these values. However, it is not simply done by having a certain knowledge in regard to true love, truth and wisdom, rather the human must possess these profound values and therefore be able to call them his own and he must experience, live and fulfill these because only this way can they be actualized through the personality and through life. Doubt is a shortcoming. Page 208. A bit of knowledge, sense and wisdom. The maintenance of doubt has, in no way, anything to do with the healthy, logical and knowledge demanding search for truth because doubt is always symptomatic of a prevailing deficit in regard to clear vision and clear recognition through which the effective facts of things connections and realities, which are brought together in basic truth, are recognized. The truth itself, however, rests in the recognition of the nature of that which is factual and thereby in the nature of effective reality. If clear vision and clear recognition consciously and appropriately exercised and extensively realized, then every trace of doubt disappears because now the complete reality is seen and recognized and, with it the fundamental, actual truth. Yet until the human obtains this clear view and clear recognition, which he has to develop through hard, evolution-promoting work, he will be unable to avoid being subject to doubts because doubts signify a fundamental activity of the developing personality, respectively, of the still ignorant material consciousness which strives for true knowledge and real truth. But doubt has to be displaced by means of obtained knowledge and recognized truth if progress relating to the consciousness is to be achieved. However, that can only be created through an appropriate clear vision and clear recognition through which truth and efficacy are recognized and understood. But the way to that is not easy and is paved with doubts which, however, may not simply be forcefully oppressed, nor should they be indulged in. Rather they must be demolished and dissolved through an appropriate clear vision and clear recognition. The End